Okay, so again, here is our formal definition for the limit right here, and you can tell because we've done a couple of these problems now that you don't want to have to actually use this definition too much. So what we do is we get together a whole bunch of theorems that come from this definition, and then we use the theorems to evaluate limits rather than going to the definition itself. So I want to go to the next board and talk a little bit about these theorems. All of them come from this definition. That is, they can all be proved using this definition. But what the theorems will allow us to do is to take some shortcuts to actually finding these limits. So let's go to the next board and take a look at those. All right, so here's our first limit theorems. We have this. If the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to l, and the limit as x goes to a of g of x is equal to m, then the limit as x goes to a of f of x plus g of x is the limit as x goes to a of f of x plus the limit as x goes to a of g of x. That is, the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, and then that will just be equal to l plus m. Well, it turns out that this limit theorem we can prove using the definition of the limit, but I'm not going to do that. That's probably in your calculus book or whatever, but that's where it comes from. You can prove this using the definition we have for a limit. Right now, all we want to do is make sure that we know how to use this. Now, it turns out that the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, and that's also true for the limit of a difference. If the limit as x goes to a, the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus g of x is the difference of those two limits, and that will be l minus m. Same thing happens for multiplication. The limit of a product is the product of the limits, and the same thing happens for division. The limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits, as long as this limit right here isn't zero, because we can't divide by zero. So the limit of a sum, a difference, a product of a quotient is always the sum, difference, product, or quotient of the limits. Now here's some other little things that come off of that also that can be proved using the definition of the limit. The limit as x goes to a of c is c. As x goes to a, c doesn't go anywhere. It stays where it is. So if c is a constant, the limit as x goes to a of c is just c. The limit as x goes to a of x is a. As x goes to a, x goes to a. And as x goes to a, x to the nth goes to a to the nth. We can just substitute here, and this is an easy one, because this exponent n, it stands for repeated multiplication. And we already know that the limit of a product is the product of the limit. So if I string a bunch of these together, I'm just going to take those limits separately, and I'll get the limit as x goes to a of x to the n is a to the n. And the same thing holds for the nth root. Okay, so all of these things are theorems that come from the definition of a limit. Now let's see if we can use these theorems to evaluate this limit right here. The limit as x goes to 2 of 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. Well, what this tells us is that I can take this limit, this limit, and this limit separately. So I can say this whole limit is the limit as x goes to 2 of this plus the limit as x goes to 2 of this, plus the limit as x goes to 2 of this. Well, when I get to this one, that limit is going to be the limit as x goes to 2 of 3 times x squared will be simply 3 times the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared. And then this one will be plus 4 times the limit as x goes to 2 of x. And the last one will be just 5. So when I, say, when I take this first limit, the limit of this product, I know that's the product of the limit. So I have the limit as x goes to 2 of 3 times the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared. Well, the limit as x goes to 2 of 3 is 3. As x goes to 2, 3 stays at 3. So that's why I have the 3 coefficient here and the 4 coefficient here and the 5 just by itself. Because as x goes to 2, 5 goes to 5. Well, now this is going to be... 3 times the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared is going to be 3 times 2 squared. And this is going to be 4 times 2 plus 5. And that stayed on? Yep. So I end up here with uh, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 plus 8 plus 5. I end up with 25. So using these limit theorems, I can take a polynomial expression like this and just take the limit term by term. And then within, within each term, I can take the limit of 3x squared as the limit as x goes to 2 of 3 and the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared. 
Well, when I get to this right here, as x goes to 2, x squared goes to 2 squared. So, what's the result? I just end up substituting 2 for x in this expression, and I end up with this limit. So, we can say this then to kind of summarize this. If y equals f of x is a polynomial function, Okay, polynomial function, nice polynomial function, we're going to do them all at once. Then, the limit as x goes to a of f of x is just f of a. So what does this mean? This means you can substitute. So you might say, well, why didn't you just tell me that earlier? Well, here's the thing. In mathematics, you have to go through this process. The first thing we have to do is define what we mean by a limit. Okay, that's the limit definition with the epsilon and delta. Then from that, we have to go through and, and develop a series of theorems that we can use for any functions we run across. Okay, so once we've done all that development, then we start to apply it to polynomials. The next thing you know, well, polynomial functions, they're all going to be the same type of thing that we've done right here. So we make this generalization for polynomial functions that the limit as x goes to 2 of this expression is just f of is just this expression evaluated when x is equal to 2. So with polynomial functions, you don't have to go through any of this limit stuff anymore with the definition or the theorems, anything like that. You can just simply substitute, find f of a, that turns out to be the limit.